good evening to all. Uh, I would like to invite Professor Sujay Bandhapadha. He completed his PhD from Iger Bhopal. Then he moved to Hanyang University, Seoul, South Korea. Currently, he is working as an assistant professor at Indra Sil University, Gujarat. And uh, uh, he has done a uh, lot of uh, publications in Chemcom and uh, in SE Supplied Material Interface. Uh, uh, really, it's my pleasure to invite you, Professor Sujay Bandhapadha. Uh, uh, so welcome to uh, this uh, uh, today topic. So he uh, uh, his broad research area um, on porous organic polymers for multifunctional applications. So usually he try to develop so many porous organic polymers. Then he used those uh, for different applications in energy applications or in water splitting applications, in environmental applications and energy applications. So today he will uh, tell us uh, about uh, the uh, one of the most applic important application that is in drug delivery systems in pharmaceutical drug industries. So how uh, that uh, uh, porous organic polymers or the functional interrelation can occur. Uh, so that he will tell, tell us and also in the basic uh, we will try to understand the basics and later we will again discuss about also that how we can use some tools uh, to draw also simple organic molecules uh, so uh, uh, hi uh, professor well yeah. now over to professor sujay bandhapadhyay Thank you, Professor Nayak, and for inviting me such a wonderful lecture. And uh, I'm happy to be here to present this talk that is basically a, entitled as Functional Group Materials uh, for Organic Transformation in Organic Synthesis and Their Application in Pharmaceutical Industry. So <clears throat> this is the talk. So today we'll discuss about how functional group is important in organic synthesis and their application in pharmaceutical. Mm, we can make a, a whole screen uh, that uh, yeah, yeah. like uh, in slideshow mode. Yes, yes. Huh. Yes. So now I think it is fine. Yes, yes. Is yes. Carry on, Professor. So in this talk, today I will introduce with functional group, then functional group in interconversion, then protecting group in organic synthesis. So what is functional group? Functional group is defined as an atom or group of atom with molecule that has similar chemical property whenever it areas in various compounds. As for example, like alcohol, aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, I mean, all are functional group. And in drug chemistry, in drug industry, it's very, very important that functional group. Uh, so why? Here, uh, why actually yeah. this is important? Important drug yeah, that, functional things? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I am going to discuss one example. We know already in aspirin is one of the good drug molecule we are used to take. So you look at that. So if we started with simple salicylic acid, so there is two functional group is present. One is carboxylic acid functional group, this group, and another is alcohol functional. So if we simply treated with acetic acid, only acetic acid, just acidic condition, that OH functional group is changed to acetal functional group. And we got one very important drug, aspirin molecule. So this why functional group is very, very important. Functional group interconversion is very, very important in pharmaceutical industry to discover a new drug. And later on, I will discuss also many more examples. How 
<coughs> pharmaceutical industry utilize to that functional group interconversion to design a new drug molecule and other things. So functional group interconversion is a process in retrosynthesis approach. The process of writing a functional group to another group to help to synthesis spelling known as functional group interconversion as designated as a FGI. So these are the simple reaction you usually do that is substitution reaction, addition reaction, elimination reaction, oxidation reaction and reduction reaction. So why functional group interconversion is needed? So a target molecule we need in industry or anywhere we, we reach follows our target. So if we reach our target, to reach a target molecule containing more than one functional group may interfere with desired reaction on second functional group during the synthesis. So this is one of the major problem in organic synthesis. So how we can tackle this problem? So by simply so, Professor, uh, yeah, during your PhD, uh, like you have developed so many organic uh, polymers, right? Uh, so, yes. in this, uh, this uh, whether uh, means when you started uh, the research, so this one, it also came to your mind that uh, uh, whether you can face any problem when you synthesize this? Yes, yes, yes. I When I started my research work in earlier days, that functional group, is very very important and there i face a lot of problem during purification or getting pure product in my research so this is the sure. basic okay, so that, that, uh, like uh, the, like uh, you told that purification and that also you try to tell in detail so that those who are newly joined or new is a newcomer or new researchers so they start they will start going to start uh, uh, the research on organic polymer so that they can able to uh, if they will face this type of problem, they can solve yes, easily. Yes, 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 yes. Definitely means not only organic polymer. If they also want to synthesize some small organic molecule, natural product, any drug molecule, so they will face this kind of problem. So uh -huh. they have to know from starting from basic. So in this talk, we are only focusing on basic thing, and later on we'll in next talk also I'll introduce more and more how we can draw in chem draw how we can purify the compound what are the purification procedures specifically in bulk state how we can purify so that will i'll discuss not today's talk but later on i'll discuss definitely okay, okay. thank very you very nice very nice yes so let's take an example this is my target molecule i have to reach this target so how we can reach this target so simply we change the functional group interconversion. So here double bond alkene is present. So here we can change the functional group means we can introduce that OH. We already discussed that alcohol is a very good functional group. So here we introduce alcohol here or here both the position is possible. Now which path is important? Which path we should follow? So if we break this alcohol, first alcohol, we get this synthone. This is, is a imaginary intermediate species, which is known as synthone. So this is the starting material, phenyl acetone. And if we discuss this one, we are getting a positive charge because oxygen is already containing negative charge. So carbon become positive. So phenyl aldehyde. So if we do the simple aldol condensation reaction, we will get the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound but here we not get same way okay so path one we should follow so this is the special designing principle is it so now i would like to classify how can we can easily interchange the functional group there i'll discuss some lot of example of different functional group I think, Professor, you have also worked in, you have many, many publications and you have know that functional group, how that metal nanoparticle synthesis, uh, you have 
very lot of experience yes, in nanoparticles. Nowadays, yes, yes. Nowadays, we want to functionalize any material. If we can able to discuss, then we want to functionalize this one, either in surface chemistry of that or that. So if we can functionalize the material, then definitely its activity will be enhanced. So that is yes, really yes. important uh, to understand how we can functionalize the materials. Yes. So that's why I told means you have a lot of experience and lot of expertise on fun nanomaterial functionalization. So that will also start from basic thing onwards. If the functional classified based on the oxidation level, and you know the oxidation is very, very important also. So the compound which have highest oxidation level in organic compound is called like carboxylic acid, ester, amide. This can be interconverted into simple reaction. So if nitrile functional group is present, if we simply hydrolysis, we'll get the carboxylic acid group. Similarly, from carboxylic acid group, if we treat with simple SOCl2, that if your nanoparticle is containing some carboxylic functional group, we can easily change to NH2 functional group. We can easily introduce, like if we convert it into SOCl2, and then we can utilize this one for ammonia sensing. It, in presence of ammonia, it can absorb and it will convert it to acid amide. So it will be a very good for uh, sensing a gas or these things. As well as if we interconvert it into easily ester, and ester we know very, very important in perfume industry. If we make a very good ester, then which is the main reason for getting a sweet smell. So this ester functional group is also very, very important. So we can lot of do many, many very simple chemistry and we can obtain different, different functional group to reach a specific target. So simply similar way from aldehyde also we can convert it to thiol functional group and you know very well, I think in, in gold nanoparticle is direct attach with that thiol functional group so it can also be possible by just simple treating with this compound and also imine functional group interconversion just treated with primary amine that aldehyde functional group it will react with imine amine and it will give the imine derivative similarly we can do also oxidation reaction which i have already discussed that if any alcohol functional group is present which is lower oxidation state level if we reach to higher oxidation state level we have to do oxidation that using pdm chlorochromate pcc or pdc whatever we use mild oxidizing agent it will be oxidized to corresponding aldehyde and if we further oxidize with chromium oxygen then we'll get the corresponding carboxylic acid derivative. Similarly, if secondary alcohol is present, we can also easily oxidize with PCC or PDC. We get the corresponding carbonyl form and we can do lot of reaction with that. One thing I would like to also discuss that some chemoselective oxidation. If we use silver oxide, we can selectively oxidize to this carbonyl aldehyde functional group it will not oxidize to OH functional group but if we treat it with strong oxidizing agent chromium oxide it's not a selective it oxidizes both the things and we get the dicarboxylic compound so all are example of functional group interconversion so we are doing many functional interconversion to reach to obtain our goal for any materials in for multifunctional application. We can do by just simply, simple chemistry we can do and we get different, different results. So one material can be utilized in many multifunctional applications. I think Professor have, uh, Professor Nayak has already so much experience to utilize many nanomaterials or many functional materials. Yeah, uh, I yes, yes, also... I, yes. Also, I also tested. I think you also given also. You can also functionalize to like phosphide or sulfide, whatever. So you want yes. to add P phosphorus in your organic uh, the mighty. If you want to add P or A, whatever as per demand, as per what exactly which will, whether we need oxidation or we need reduction, oxygen evolution or this. Then I think um, just you uh, ask me that. Uh, 
what exactly important so if i told you p then you can try to add some phosphorus or sulfur as as, as i remember that uh, this uh, you did it right so you functionalize yeah. all this okay yes so and also one more thing that oxidation uh, mainly so many in very basic way is it possible that any story where this is that oxidation exactly like means what exactly uh, it do it will oxidize means whatever the lower oxidation state level like alcohol mm -hmm. it is a lower oxidation state level if okay. you do treated with any oxidizing agent it will further oxidize means oxidation state will increase Yes, yes. Okay. Similar way, we can do also reduction reaction, but treated with some reducing agent like NaPH4, lithium, aluminum, hydride. What here? That here, or oxidation state will be lower down. That ester group can easily convert it to alcohol. Just reverse reaction is also possible by just simple treating with some reagent. Or reducing agent or oxidizing agent, we can easily interchange the functional group. Or acidamide group, if you also reduce with lithium aluminum hydride, it can be reduced to corresponding amine. Nitrile group also possible to get the corresponding amine derivative. So if nitrile group is present, so if we want to reach the nitrogen functional group, we can simply do the reduction. And also from nitrile group, we easily convert it to corresponding aldehyde by treatment with dibal H. This is a very selective reagent. So there are a lot of examples we can do oxidation, reduction, so many things possible. Just simple functional group interconversion. So we can also remove the functional group like as for example here is the alcohol is present. So this is a secondary alcohol. Just remove water by heat. If water will be removed, then we will obtain alkene. This alkene compound will obtain. If we treated with hydrogen, and if we do the reduction in hydrogen palladium, then we get alkene. So all functional group also easily possible to remove. So now I am going to discuss another important thing that is protecting. We need to protect the functional group also that whatever the problem we face in particularly in industrial application for resulting drug synthesis, that there are a lot of multifunctional group is present. So when we do some specific reactions, especially this thing is very, very important for new researcher. We have to know a lot of protecting group because if there are multiple functional group is present, that will hamper your reaction. So we have to protect one functional group and another functional group will be reacted. So how that we can do the protection? A protecting group is a molecular framework that is introduced onto a special, fun special functional group in a polyfunctional molecule to block a reactive under reactive condition. Need to make modification in the elsewhere of the molecule. So here free, lot of free functional group is present. We use simple protecting group. So it will protect our functional group. So what is the criteria to choose a good protecting functional group? It should be readily available, but selectively introduced to desired functional group in a polyfunctional molecule. It should be stable and resistance to the reagent and employed in subsequent reaction state in which the group being masked and its desire remain deactivated or protected. It should be capable of being selectively removed under mild condition when its protection is no longer required. So when our job was done, we have also have to remove the protecting group. So these are the condition is important for choosing a good protecting so alcohol, we can easily convert it to corresponding ethyl. And we know alcohol is more reactive compared to ethyl. Right? Yes. So we can protect we can protect alcohol functional group. So this is a silyl ether protecting group. 
if we use the silyl ether that alcohol functional group is present it converted to silyl ether similarly acetal protecting group we can easily convert it into acetal functional so these are the example of good protecting group like trimethyl silyl ether otms triethyl silyl ether and also tetrabutyl dimethyl silyl ether and tetrabutyl diphenyl silyl so these all are very good protecting group and if we alcohol is treated with corresponding silyl moiety in presence of base it is easily converted to corresponding protection so what are the bases needed here we generally choose and professor after nitrogen. conversion after conversion how we can understand what are the uh, catechin technique needed to understand this is converted to this how you can understand yeah yeah so the there are many more technique like we can use ftir for okay. just checking the functional group the functional group can be okay ftir yeah. for your uh, transforming yeah. spectroscopy and any infrared other techniques and also nmr nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy okay mass spectrometry so this technique so this utilize. three technique mainly important to characterize uh, after conversion we can uh, can like so if we can if we can understand if someone we can understand nmr properly ftir and uh, mass spectroscopy then for uh, him or her it will be very easy to understand the one functional group change to another functional group right yes yes, yes. Mm, okay So, so how we can deprotect that silyl protecting group? As I discussed that when our job was done, we have to also deprotect that. So if we treat it with some fluoride salt like TBF, tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride, what will happen? That fluorine is a very good electronegative atom we know. So it will attract to silyl moiety and it will deprotect. And after that, we'll get our corresponding alcohol again and we'll get this compound. So, like this way, we can deprotect the functional group. So, here one of the example where both the alcohol is present, but we have to selectively oxidize that secondary alcohol. How we can do? So, we use one equivalent tetrabutyl dimethyl silyl chloride, one equivalent. Here, very, very important is here two functional group is present, so molecular ratio is very very important here so if we use one equivalent it will directly directly react with um, that primary functional group and if we do the oxidation with pcc and further we can deprotect it then we'll get our desired molecule So completed. Hmm. So no, no, I am going to discuss also many more example, uh, two three more examples. So acetal protection also. So if dicarboxylic. So sorry, we can uh, so uh, so mainly uh, after conversion we have to also understand three more uh, three more things. The catechin techniques mainly it is highly important to understand those the catechin technique such as NMR yes, and uh, mass spectroscopy and FTI. Yeah. And so, um, kindly uh, please uh, be with us and uh, please also try to explain us also that uh, NMR spectroscopy and little bit how we can also use some tools to characterize after the getting the NMR spectra from the instrument, how we can study this one, NMR or FTIR or mass. So that will be also very helpful for the researchers, new researchers. Yes, yes. Especially I'll discuss Mastronova software, we'll how that will be one another talk and I'll give a demonstration also how we can analyze any spectra, proton NMR spectra, 13 CNMR spectra to Master Nova software. So, and also that FTIR. So, here, if we look at, there is a carbonyl group is present. So, if we measure the FTIR spectra, so we'll get peak around 1700 centimeter inverse. And if we protect it with 
this group that peak will be disappear so from that also we can conclude that our protection or interconversion of functional group was done yes very nice and and easily deprotect this compound using acetic acid also then we'll reback our carbonate compound and this is one of the very good steroid compound for synthesis of different steroid we need this molecule so here i'll show you that how it will be utilized so here we have done the we can do the very good acetyl production and after that we'll do the reduction using sodium ammonia and further treated with sodium borohydride then what will happen that carbonyl group will be reduced to corresponding alcohol and in presence of acetic acid it will again reback the corresponding carbonyl compound and this is a very very important material for synthesis of different different drug molecules in pharmaceutical industry and also another good protecting group is dcc so if we use dcc this that is will put yeah one three dicyclohexyl carbadiamide so if we use this moiety it will protect it will be utilized for protecting the carboxylic acid group further we treated with lithium hydroxide we can easily in presence of uh, hydrogen peroxide we can get back our corresponding carboxylic acid and tbock is also very well known for protecting the ammonia group generally in pharmaceutical drug molecule there are a lot of amine functional group is present and we need to protect the functional group so using tbock we can easily protect so this is one of the example where we can do the tbock protection and after treating with trifluoroacetic acid we can also get back the our desired mb so thank you so we next have... so you will you will teach us that how we can nmr or ftir or uh, mass we will use uh, the cation tool is used to understand the functional group before and after that how it is changing and how we can analyze this one that you will give a good uh, so that uh, the new researchers uh, so after they are preparing the material they can easily uh, understand and they can do their work very easily uh, it will be very helpful for the new researchers uh, so really it is a very nice stuff so uh, really i would like to thank you very much uh, so really it is my pleasure uh, that uh, uh, today i uh, uh, got you and you gave your uh, valuable time um, for us thank you very much professor Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nair. And thank you very much. Okay. Have a nice day.